Are we 100 years behind where we should be as a civilization? Did greed and the pursuit of power create the world that we live in today? Could one man in the late 1800s have changed the course of history? Was he stopped by the men who controlled the money and power simply because his vision of free wireless electricity would not be profitable, despite the fact that it would completely change every human's life on this planet for the better? Today, we'll discuss the story of Nikola Tesla. And I like that you said his name correctly. Nikola. It's Nikola Tesla. Nikola. I have a buddy in Macedonia, and his name is Nikola. Nikola. And here's what's interesting. Macedonia is where? Former Yugoslavia. It's uh, it's right there. We used to fly into Croatia all the time. Croatian, yeah. When we'd go out there. Nice. Guess who's back? Back again. Guess who's back? Guess who's hello, back? Hello, hello, hello. It's Josh, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Good Welcome evening. Welcome back, Josh. Oh, it's good to be back. Where it's have you been, Josh? I was, well, wasn't really gone too terribly long. I just haven't been on the podcast for the last three weeks. I was in Guatemala visiting friends, and I took a nice vacation and a nice reset, which was much needed, and it was awesome. Saw my first live volcano. Mm. That was fun. Yeah. Did you yeah. sacrifice anybody? No, there no. no one was no one was available. Right. Everybody had plans. Dang. You didn't push anybody into a piece of gods? <laughs> yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. It was cool. I was at a I was at a brewery and just sitting there drinking the beer and there there's a volcano in the distance and it's just spewing out and I'm thinking, "Wow, I don't get this at home." Man. I'm like this is this is a nice view. <laughs> Downtown Atlanta doesn't have many volcanoes. No. Thank, thank goodness, <laughs> right? Not at all. I think the closest I ever was uh, to a volcano when I was really, really small, Mount St. Helens, blew up. You were there? Well, I would have been in North Idaho. Wasn't it like in the early 80s, right? Mm -hmm. And it was raining ash everywhere. Do you remember that part of it raining Yeah, there's there there was times where... uh, Too young for this. My grand... We'd go visit my grandparents in Salem, Oregon. On the way, uh, my brothers would hop out and grab a, a bunch of ash from Mount St. Helens. Because it was still around. Oh, that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were staying um, with my friends, and they have a they have a house in Antigua. And the volcano most most of the stuff goes on the other end, other side of the volcano. So Antigua is pretty safe, but it's gone off a couple of times, pretty pretty big. I guess how that's how you say it. No. And they had ash all over their house and stuff. So every time they go mm. outside, like when they sit on the on the patio or stuff, they always had to wipe off all the ash. Mm-hmm. And there was still ash on stuff. Like I would wipe stuff off the seats and the cushions and stuff when I would go out and sit. It's really important to wipe your ash. You wipe your ash. <laughs> you got to wipe your ash really well because otherwise you get itchy. Well, glad you're back. Yeah. Dude. Glad you Welcome made back, it safe. Josh. Had a good well, week, um, couple so weeks. I'm rest. very happy. I'm so happy to be back with you guys. I missed y'all. I really missed do. you too, buddy. So good to see you, Josh. Let's let's all go out to the uh, guides to. Oh, well, Josh. Today we are going to talk about Nikola Tesla. Do you know a lot about this man? <gasps> yeah, I saw him on the movie, um, <laughs> uh, the Magician movie. Uh, yeah. Oh gosh, uh, what was that? With, yeah, that's with, what he's famous with, for. With Christopher yeah. Nolan. With Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Jackman. And Christian oh Bale. gosh, what is that yeah. called? The Prestige. The Prestige, yeah, that's uh, right. The Prestige, yeah. Creepy movie. You know of Nikola Tesla from The Prestige, the movie The Prestige. Oh, yeah, of course. He, he was great. It was like my favorite part of the movie. Yeah, he's an amazing actor, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Nikola Tesla. Let me give you guys some backstory on this guy. You ready? Mm-hmm. Josh, I'm going to inform you that Nikola Tesla was not an actor in The Prestige. That was another man playing Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla was born in 1856 in the Austrian Empire, former Yugoslavia, now modern-day Croatia, to a Serbian Eastern Orthodox priest father and a mother who had a talent for making homecraft tools and mechanical appliances. His mother actually had no formal education in mechanics or engineering, 
and Tesla would later state that he credits his mother for influencing him with her creative abilities and problem-solving skills. From an early age, he could memorize entire books and store mathematical equations in his mind. He picked up languages easily, and he could work through days and nights with only a few hours of sleep. Tesla needed no model to test his inventions. They appeared before his eyes as functioning realities that he could stop and start as though they were really there. It's like all these big brained guys, you know, like Steve Jobs, um, probably Elon Musk, you know, they all have this same feature where they can just see it and they got it really good. So if he thought of an object, it would appear before him exhibiting the appearance of a solid object with mass. So greatly did these visions possess the attributes of actual objects that it was usually difficult for him to distinguish between vision and reality. This abnormal faculty functioned in a very useful fashion in his schoolwork with mathematics. During my boyhood, I had suffered from a particular affliction due to the appearance of images, which were often accompanied by strong flashes of light. Weird. When a word was spoken, the image of the object designated would present itself so vividly in my vision that I could not tell whether what I saw was real or not. Even though I reached out and passed my hand through it, the image would remain fixed in space, recalls Tesla. He had like a built-in Jarvis. He did. Yeah, a total built-in Jarvis. What's a mathematical equation to help me with this problem? And it'd be like answering him. Didn't he have like a somewhat photographic memory? Yeah, he uh, definitely was uh, photographic for sure. Even all the uh, documentaries and stuff that you watch, he's he's got a good brain to just see it and memorize it easily. Oh yeah, he would he would go on to say. Then I began to take mental excursions beyond the small world of my actual knowledge. Yeah, day and night in imagination, I went on journeys, saw new places, cities, countries, and all the time tried hard to make these imaginary things very sharp and clear in my mind. I imagined myself living in countries I had never seen. I made imaginary friends who were very dear to me and really seemed alive. This I did constantly until I was 17, when my thoughts turned seriously to invention. Then, to my delight, I found I could visualize with the greatest faculty. I needed no models, drawings, or experiments. I could picture them all in my mind. Where you could kind of just see the code just fall off the wall and go, oh yeah, that's it. Okay, so a Nikola Tesla today says these things out loud. People go, you're absolutely crazy. We're going to give you a medication that's going to help you not have those visions. Today, are we just numbing future Nikola Teslas? That's an interesting question. I mean, I've never really thought of it. I personally wouldn't because I've always felt that by doing that, you are eliminating future Nikola Teslas and Da Vinci's and, you know, and the list goes on and on. So that's why I've always been against that. And I do get that there are learning disabilities that may require some type of medication. But I also think that our educational system has just been nothing but a failure and it is uh, set up to get rid of these future brilliant minds. You don't fit in, so um, we're going to medicate you and send you on your way. This is a preview of the next episode of Created by Human. (laughs) (laughs) The influence of the Rothschilds on education in America. (laughs) Next on Created by Human. Do you think that maybe back in his time, in the mid to late 1800s, that people were more open to bizarre ideas because it was such a boom in creativity in a sense of we're going to advance society, we're going to move forward and all this kind of things. And everybody was looking for the next thing that was going to be big. I don't know. I mean, I think today you have a guy like Tesla who is sitting there and envisioning something and explaining it to you saying, I can see it right now. And it's something that doesn't exist. I think today that kid is medicated yeah, and he can't see those visions anymore. It's all about the parents, right? If they go, well, yeah, maybe we should medicate little Johnny, then we will. It's the education system going, your child is having difficulty 
paying attention and focusing in class and seems to have a learning disability. And then, you know, the parents go, oh my gosh, that's awful. So then they take their child to a doctor and the doctor goes, I have a pill for that. Yeah, true. We definitely go quick to the pill. Doctors don't give a shit anymore either, man. They are pill pushers. That's exactly who they are. They push pills. Not all. I'm not going to be so general and say all, but the majority are. Here's a pill. This lines my pocket. This will pay for my car. That's it. This pill that I give you. And they are not concerned about other things. They're just, here you go. Here's a pill. This will numb you. Well, I don't, but don't you think America is a little bit of like that too? America, think about your diet thing. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, can't I just take this pet magical pill and it'll just cure all that stuff, all that fat off my body? Yeah. And Tim, that's why I say not all doctors, because just for you guys out there that don't know, I have a little bit of a weird heart condition. And I went and saw my heart doctor not too long ago. And honestly, things were getting so weird for me that I really just, you know, I was like, just give me something that can alleviate whatever this is now. And he literally prescribed me 90 ounces of water and yoga. (laughs) Right. But it blew my mind because honestly, that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want him to push a pill on me, although I was at the point of begging for it. Hmm. I didn't truly want that. And he didn't prescribe that. So not all doctors. And that's why I well, you can say definitely all. go to homeopathic doctors nowadays. Oh, for sure. But this wasn't a homeopathic doctor. Yeah, like a wow. homeopathic doctor, you would assume that that's kind of the direction. Well, that good for going, him. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He's I actually mean, I was, doing I his doctor impressed. work. He was. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys are in the Atlanta area and you're looking for a heart doctor, <laughs> I got one. Hit me up. DM me. This guy's good. He's just basically going to tell you to drink a ton of water and do some yoga. Yeah. I, well, let's do some <laughs> yoga. Yoga. Well, here's the deal, That's guys. I'm, I'm basically a doctor now. So yeah. drink a lot of water, mm-hmm. do some yoga, and you'll All be fine. All your problems are gone. That's it. I know. All your problems are gone. Whatever you have. Anxiety, heart disease. Todd, you need to make a created by human water bottle. Oh, created gosh, that's by a human, great idea. human podcast water bottle. If you drink the water out of this particular water bottle, not only mm-hmm. will you have better health, but your heart will be thankful for it, and you won't have any bad nightmares. And you'll be able to have these types of visions like Nikola right. Tesla, where you'll see the future in front of you and it'll unfold and you'll be able to create change in the world. That's right. All because of this water bottle. Buy your created by human water bottle today. Three payments of one hundred and twenty nine ninety nine. dollars By the way, if you call in the next 30 minutes, we'll give you two. Next 30 minutes. <laughs> We're going to give you two. Two for the price of one. One, <laughs> one, one. So back to no, uh, point, yeah, I, Nikola Tesla. Of, uh, oh, this will, okay. lead, this will lead us back. Oh, hold on, guys. Josh wants, oh, Josh to, say wants to say hold something. Hold on. <laughs> hold on, guys. Josh wants to talk. This will lead us back into <laughs> Go ahead, Josh. what we're trying to do. The, I think that's a really uh, cool debate, you know, do you sacrifice genius for social skills? Because a lot of times parents would be like, oh, well, yeah, he's odd and he's, you know, I don't, can't really fully understand my kid, but I want him to be normal and have normal friends and normal interactions. And so they might medicate, which makes you question like, is our society set up for geniuses? Because geniuses in many cases have to kind of sacrifice social abilities because of how they are. I, I think if you look at the current the current model that we have right now, we have have a guy like Tesla, right? I, I I think that I've even heard about him currently. He doesn't know where to fit in to this world. He's making this world fit him in a way. You Ballsy. know, I've heard that said about him. It's a difficult thing, and he he's just like, gosh, I'll I'll have to build it myself then. Well, he, yeah, and he did have some level of normality, I guess you could say. At the age of 19, he was studying electrical engineering at the Polytechnic Institute in Austria, where he quickly established himself as a star student. Now, that's pretty impressive for somebody who's seeing visions, right? He found himself in an ongoing debate with a professor over perceived design flaws in the direct current motors that were currently being demonstrated in class. Tesla later wrote, I had so much energy to spare. When I undertook the task, it was not with a resolve such as men often make. With me, it was a sacred vow, a question of life and death. I knew that I would perish if I failed. Now, I feel that the battle was won. 
back in the deep recesses of the brain was the solution, but I could not yet give it outward expression. Wow. Right? Like there he is right there. Like that sounds like a sane mind. He knows himself. He knows what's up. He knows what's up. Oh, he's definitely a sane mind. He was just OCD. I, I mean, he was, if you could clinically give any kind of diagnosis, he probably was. He was probably OCD. Well, I think some of those, and we'll get into that later on, but I think some of that was developed habits over time that led to levels of OCD. But we're talking about at this young age, this guy was having visions, had an unbelievable confidence in himself, which is fascinating. He knew he was smart. The dude was basically saying, uh, hey, professor, this whole thing that we've been using for quite a while now with uh, direct current, uh, these motors, it's wrong. Uh, excuse me, young man. <laughs> right? I mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you don't see it like I do. You can't. Well, I mean, even Edison, right? He couldn't see like Tesla was. And that's where Edison's like, no. who is this freak? I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't like him. They didn't like each other, like right off the. I mean, even though he hired him to come on board, he was like, I think about don't a month jump in. Too far he was ahead. Like, we haven't gotten there oh, yet. I'm so sorry. See, I do this. I don't mean to, Todd. You do I do this, this, man. I guess so I'm excited. Follow the story. I don't have it in front of he's me. Too, I, he's his, he's I need too it. smart. He's I just, just he can't control his brain. Just I just can't control myself. I'm like all of this Tesla smartness. over here. You're like a Tesla. You're already seeing. The story yeah. before the stories happen. I'm, I've already finished this podcast. We've already said bye. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm omnipresent via this podcast about Tesla. Mm, oh yes, yes, yeah. I have an aura. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks. I'm really proud of my humility too. Yeah, you sound real humble mm-hmm. with your Bucky's I'm t-shirt. Super proud of my my <laughs> humble nature. Yeah. For those of you who can't see, I have a Bucky's t-shirt on. Man, can you imagine a Tesla walking into a, a Bucky's? I could make better pork rinds. I could make that brisket better. I could literally heat up these hot dogs way faster way than a faster. quarter of the time. Yeah, back in the uh, mid-1800s, I came up with a device that would um, roast nuts much <laughs> faster than your <laughs> nut roasting machine. Your machine's roasting the nuts. Half the time that my machine could do it. Half the nut roasting capacity is really problematic when you're trying to service these amount of pumps. I, I feel uh, pretty sure he would be disgusted by the amount of pumps. I wonder what he ate for a living. You know, what was his, his diet? What he ate for a living? He fed off electricity. Ate electricity. <laughs> Fed off electricity. Yeah. <laughs> I recharged. He sits in his Let's basement. get this mission going. I'm ready to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> They'll bow to me sooner or later. Yeah, geniuses become villains in many cases. Yeah, right. Geniuses do become villains. That's true. But let's get back <laughs> to Nikola Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> you sons of bitches. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right, Todd. Rabbit hole over. Until the next one. Yes, until the next one, obviously. Nicola! Okay, so sorry, Todd. We, we messed it up again. All right. Tesla would spend the next six years of his life thinking about electromagnetic fields and a hypothetical motor powered by an alternate current that would and should work. The thoughts obsessed him and he was unable to focus on his schoolwork. Professors at the university warned Tesla's father that the young scholar's working and sleeping habits were going to kill him. But rather than finish his studies, Tesla became a gambling addict, lost all his tuition money, dropped out of school, and suffered a nervous breakdown. And it would not be his last. Too smart. Too smart. Not smart with money, though. No. As we continue on, that will become very evident. In 1881, Tesla moved to Budapest. After recovering from his breakdown, and he was walking through the park with a friend, reciting poetry, when a vision came to him. There, in the park, with a stick, Tesla drew a crude diagram in the dirt, a motor using the principles of rotating magnetic fields created by two or more alternating currents. 
while AC electrification had been employed before, there would never be a practical working motor run on alternating current until he invented his induction motor several years later. In June of 1844, Tesla sailed for New York City and arrived with four cents in his pocket and a letter of recommendation from Charles Batchelor, a former employer, to Thomas Edison, which was reported to say, My dear Edison, I know two great men and you are one of them. The other is this young man. No one's ever written me a letter like that. I will, Todd. I'll do it tonight. Will you? I'll write a letter for you. Can I just give it to like anybody? Yeah. Like I'm going to laminate it. Yeah. Right. I'm going to laminate that. And just like anytime I go anywhere, I run into the gas station yeah. and I'm like, hey, Tim said he knows two great men. And you, sir, behind the counter are one of them. I, sir, am the other. Ooh. That is quite. Wow. Can you imagine? This guy really and then liked just Tesla. Leave. Just leave the counter. Yeah. Just leave it there. Just, just bounce. Yeah. Leave him questioning his life. A meeting was arranged, and once Tesla described the engineering work he was doing, Edison, though skeptical, hired him. According to Tesla, Edison offered him $50,000 if he could improve upon the DC generation plants Edison favored. Within a few months, Tesla informed the American inventor that he had indeed approved upon Edison's motors. Edison, Tesla noted, refused to pay up. When you become a full-fledged American, you will appreciate an American joke. Edison told him, what a prick. I, I, yeah, I definitely think that that guy Edison was kind of a a jerk after hearing this. He was an absolute jerk. He seemed definitely all about the money. He was a a scientist only hell bent on getting money. He was a businessman. He didn't really care about others. He's just like, yeah, how's this going to make me? Yeah. And this, you know, that's why he didn't know what to do with Tesla. He was like, oh, this guy's a fruit. I'll quickly run him over. Well, I think that's what Edison did, man. And I think that's what a lot of these titans of industry back in the day would do is they would just constantly take advantage of people at every turn. I mean, here's a guy that's traveled all the way across the world to America with a sick note of recommendation from a buddy. Edison hires him. Edison promises something. Tesla delivers. Edison says, you can't take a joke, bro. Well, guess what happens? Tesla promptly quit and took a job digging ditches. One of the most brilliant minds in the world is now digging ditches. But that wouldn't last long before word got out about Tesla's AC motor was worth investing in. And the Western Union Company put Tesla to work in a lab not far from Edison's office. Take that, Edison. Yeah, you punk. You punk. Edison, you're a mean, mean. You're a mean one, Mr. Mr. Edison. Edison. You really are a dick. <laughs> Thanks for all your <laughs> stupid power lines that mess up all our land, you Mr. Edison. You couldn't wirelessly charge anything if you tried. I, don't I know. missed y'all. Just a way to end it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Josh. Yeah, Josh, welcome back. <laughs> All right, so he's not far from Edison's office, where he designed AC power systems that are still used around the world. The motors I built there, Tesla said, were exactly as I had imagined them. I made no attempt to improve the design. I merely reproduced the pictures as they appeared in my vision. And the operation was always as I expected. Tesla patented his AC motors and power system, which were said to be the most valuable invention since the telephone. Soon, George Westinghouse, recognizing that Tesla's designs might be just what he needed in his efforts to unseat Edison's DC current, licensed his patents for $60,000 in stocks, cash, and royalties based on how much electricity Westinghouse could sell. Ultimately, He won the war of the currents, but at a very steep cost. Fearing ruin, Westinghouse begged Tesla for relief from the royalties Westinghouse agreed to. Your decision determines the fate of the Westinghouse company, he said. Tesla, grateful to the man who had never tried to swindle him, tore up the royalty contract, walking away from millions in royalties that he was already owed and billions that would have accrued in the future. He would have been one of the wealthiest men in the world. Who 
does that? A genius. A scientist poet. He just was here riffing, riffing on some science, and then he'd be dead in a few years, and he's out. I mean, that's what's incredible about this, though. Like, he had such a vision for changing the future, for changing the world. Yeah. That he didn't care about money. Now, you know, later on in his life, this would come back and bite him in the ass. Oh, big time. But I think that's one of the reasons why I have always been so fascinated with Tesla. I've always thought of him as one of the most brilliant minds because it never had anything to do with money. Yeah, it really all was visceral. Guts, his guts. What's my gut telling me? Oh, and then and then it would go right to his brain and he'd see a vision, you know, put his hands through the model. Like, who can do that? That's a pretty smart brain. Uh, it's just fascinating. Before the turn of the 20th century, Tesla had invented a powerful coil that was capable of generating high voltages and frequencies, leading to the new forms of light, such as neon and fluorescence, as well as x-rays. Tesla also discovered that these coils, soon to be called Tesla coils, made it possible to send and receive radio signals. He quickly filed for an American patent in 1897, beating the Italian inventor Marconi. Yes! Take that, Italy. Tesla believed his mind to be without equal. If Edison had a needle to find in a haystack, Tesla once said, he would proceed at once with the diligence of a bee to examine straw after straw until he found the object of his search. I was a sorry witness of such doing that a little theory and calculation would have saved him 90% of his labor. He's calling the dude out. Science battle. Nerd off. 1896. I know more math than you. I think our science fairs would be way more exciting these (laughs) days if they were science battles. I'm not running. I'm not. It's not me. I have a fan on. (laughs) Uh, You want me to turn my fan? Send that to the family. (laughs) That was the family. family. I got that too. (laughs) Oh. Uh, that's funny. I was like, I, me? I'm not I'm my fan. I turned my fan on. Who's running water? I'm doing a podcast. Who's pod- doing kids. it? Kids. Kids, Listen, I'm doing a podcast. Kids. kids, I freaking told you from three to five, I'll be working on a podcast. a podcast. Don't flush the going. toilets. Don't take a shower. Don't slam doors. Come on now. Get it together, <laughs> children. Your daddy's trying to make history here. At least, okay? At, at least Noah's trying to get on AOL. Who's using dial-up at the moment? Daddy's on a podcast. Come on, Daddy's so on loud. A- Forget it. <laughs> Your daddy's freaking doing a podcast right now. You better cut it out, children, okay? I get off this podcast. I'm going to whoop some ass, okay? You're all getting on Ritalin. You're all putting all you bastard children on Ritalin right now, huh? Oh, I'm going to detesselize all your asses. <laughs> I'll give you all Lexapro. Keep it up. Oh. Yeah, the, you guys like Lexapro? How about Rebelsa? Hmm? You like that Rebelsa? Hmm, what do you guys want? Hmm? You guys yeah. want some Abilify? Hmm? <laughs> I'll give you some Abilify. Hey, by the way, guys, we ain't being sponsored for any of these medications. <laughs> I right? wish we were. Drink water, do yoga. <laughs> Drink okay? water. All right. We're being sponsored by water and yoga. <laughs> We don't even have a DVD to promote. Maybe we could make a created by human yoga session. It's it's literally it's just, just forty five minutes of me drinking you, water. You would drinking water. I'm in the, me drinking water, watching Josh do yoga, just casually doing in short, yoga. Like I'll be terribly. in short shorts. <laughs> yeah, I'll just be drinking water. Can I be in the background Josh, eating a, a Big Mac or something? <laughs> just grease you can be. your Bucky's t shirt all over my yeah. face. Yeah. Yeah, just dripping yeah, down. Totally. Yeah, maybe it's just what I do. I get every Bucky snack I can, and just uh, <laughs> you're doing yoga, and I'm eating like you know Bucky's cornbread and <laughs> cornbread chips. Your face is cup deep in some Bucky's nuts. <laughs> yeah, Bucky's nuts. That's right, because you know the Bucky's nuts are tasty. So what were we talking about? Oh yeah, Tesla. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, that guy Tesla. Um, Last we said, Tesla was talking shit about Edison, basically. Good. He was dropping the mic on Edison, I think I would, too. 
Yeah, he was totally dropping the mic on Edison. But here's the thing, though. His contemporaries may have been lacking in scientific talent, such as Tesla. They clearly possessed the trait that Tesla did not. Mm. They had a business mind. Yeah. They had a mind for business. Yeah. And in the last days of the American Gilded Age, Nikola Tesla made a dramatic attempt to change the future of communications and power transmission around the world. Guess where we're going next? Oh, please say it's a power tower. It's going to be a power Power tower. A power tower. A power tower. Is that it's called the Tesla the, tower? The things coming out the top. Oh, yeah. It, well, uh, yeah. That was different. That was his Tesla coil. Yeah. Like the, the, the famous no, that, picture. That, right. Right. There's the Tesla. The coil famous up. picture of him sitting in that giant room with the lightning going everywhere. That was that's the a Tesla coil. coil. Yeah, that's that coil. Yeah. Now I I believe Tesla. You're going to get into it, so I'll, I'll let you do it. But uh, yeah, that that power, he. He had to talk. He had to swindle some people to build that thing. Not swindle, but he did. He he definitely played his cards on it. Interesting, and go into it, Todd. It's good. It's a good one. Yeah. So now we're going to talk about the Tesla Tower. No, Joe. Josh, did you die? <coughs> From yeah. <sighs> Bucky. Bucky's, Bucky's nuts. nuts. They're back Bucky. again. Okay. All good. You know, cure that water and yoga. Yep, that's right. Get that water and yoga going there, buddy. All right. Let's talk about the Tesla Tower. One of Tesla's beliefs was that the Great Pyramids of Egypt were giant transmitters of energy, and he built his Tesla Tower inspired by studying the pyramids. Tesla filed a patent in the U.S. titled The Art of Transmitting Electrical Energy Through the Natural Medium. The patent spoke about a unique design consisting of a series of generators around the world that would tap into the ionosphere for energy collection. The design highlighted planet Earth itself and its two poles as a gigantic electrical generator of limitless energy. His triangle-shaped design became known as the Tesla Electromagnetic Pyramid, which finally culminated in his famous Tesla Tower also known as Wardenclyffe Tower. It was a bold design envisioned by Tesla by the creation of a tower that could deliver electricity without wires to the whole world, absolutely free of cost. Let's just stop here. This is big. There's so many conspiracy theories right here. This is huge, right? And we're going to kind of, we're going to go a little bit more into this as far as kind of how the construction went and how things went. But imagine a world today. They say that we are 100 years behind where we should be. And when they say that, a lot of times they're talking about Tesla. They're talking about this free energy thing, that if this had actually worked and taken off and wasn't stopped, we would live in a totally different world right now. Without a doubt. Okay. This is a big, this is a big topic. We're opening a big topic here for me. When you really look at uh, now, and, and 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 there's a fine line with all of this technology, right? I think when it comes down to the powers, let's call them the powers that be, they have a job to do, right? And for well, they feel like they have a job to do, and that's to do what well, kind of annoy us, one, but then to what protect us, quotes in quotes, right? There's this sort of thing going on where you think about like an FCC or whoever handles what kind of the gateways that handle our technology and what we're allowed to play with. I want to say that part of my thought behind it is that I'm glad that those precautions are there because let's just say someone invents teleportation tomorrow and they're like, yeah, guess what? I, I, I invented teleportation. Teleportation seems like a great idea at first, but then when it comes to humanity and where they take it, the negative places that they take teleportation would ruin teleportation. And we see that happening all the time with uh, the internet and just, you know, the internet's a gift, but it's also this massive problem too. Now, but I don't feel that way about free energy. Free energy should be a right that everybody has because I mean, if if it is true that we can just get free energy, I mean, definitely that's going to make the guys who want to control are you know, their their pocketbooks are going to be pissed off and they're going to cut that out as soon as they can 
which is unfair to every country, every person out there. So I'm trying to say, like, what would what would be the problem that we get free? What who's going to ruin free energy for everybody? No one, right? It's that's it's like a nice. We're all at a place where we love energy. We love having. So why not make it free? Why not make it green? If we are going to be going to some sort of hellscape here in the near future, or our environment's ruined because of us, why aren't we talking about free energy now? You know, well, you know, it it, it goes back to money, money, control, control, yeah, power, greed, greed. It goes greed. back to all of that, man. Because he, here's the thing: if you think about this, if energy is free, if anybody can tap in to free energy. Then there is no use. I mean, there there's a whole oh, it, industry. It ruins going. it ruins an industry that we don't need. That we don't need. Now let's talk about you know at the same time you have this whole power grid system that is now gone. It would morph into something new, but it's not as big as it is now. Then you also have natural gas, oil. You have all these natural energy sources that go away. We don't need them anymore. We would be driving electric cars. 50, 60 years ago. And then on top of that, if we start even going even further about this, man. Yeah, it's a whole domino effect. It's a whole problems. thing, man, because the things that are the things that are made illegal today. It's proven that psilocybin can cure PTSD that can actually change. Reset things. the brain. DMA. There's, Reset uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, yeah. All, there's all these things out there that have been made illegal and that have been nothing but like Because it ruins somebody's pocketbook. It ruins somebody's pocketbook. I cannot patent and manufacture and package a mushroom. But why do I need you when I can grow it? Right. For the most part, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make something similar to that, actually even <laughs> but way that more addictive. Yeah, and gives right? you a way few more, more symptoms that you don't want. It gives you a lot more symptoms, and I'm going to package it in a pill form and make it synthetic. That way I can patent it, and I can control it, and I can profit off of it. And if you need it, you have to get it from me. This goes back to what I say about all of us. Listen, humanity, please, uh, everybody, greedy, non-greedy, poor, rich, we don't have much time here. Open up your hands. Within reason, I get that you got to pay for your bills, but at what point are you being too good? What, who, what are you trying to get? The whole earth? What? Yes. That's what they're trying to, that's what they have right now. You have family lineages who have skyscrapers amounts of money. Like if you were to take uh, all the wealth of the, let's say a Rockefeller or, a, you know, these big wealthy JP Morgan kind of families, right? They have wealth that would like be two or three Sears Tower stacks of stacks of cash and they still want more money. They still aren't. It's satisfied. not about money anymore. I know it's they not want about power. money anymore. They want control. The more it's power. Power. But the more control. money they can pull away from you and put in their accounts, the less you have to fight back. They want more control. You know, about five years ago, we took a trip up to Cincinnati and Cincinnati area, and that's where my wife's side of the family is from. We were having dinner, and I was sitting across from my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law at the time was telling me about. A friend of his, not somebody he heard about or somebody that he heard through the grapevine, a friend of his, his friend had developed a device about the size of an AC unit on the side of your house. And this device would hook up to your home and it would take initial energy to start the device. But once the device started, it ran continuous power. It kept creating its own energy. Now this existed, but guess what? It's illegal. Well, no. Have you heard anything about it? No. People talking about it? Have you read an article about it? No. Here's another story. Let me share this story with you. Just out of high school, I was riding with a buddy of mine and his father back from a uh, NASCAR race. My buddy's father worked for Exxon Mobil. Pretty high up there, an executive of Exxon Mobil. I'm riding in the back of their car and we're all talking. And he turns to me and says, you do know that ExxonMobil has a car that runs on water. Mm -hmm. We've had it forever. Mm -hmm. It's patented and you'll never see it. Mm -hmm. Dude, again, firsthand information coming at me. This guy was a high up executive in ExxonMobil who is telling me this and says, 
you'll never see it. I mean, okay, there are a lot of conspiracy theories out there, right? And they're laughable, some of them. But I will tell you, the greed aspect of where, like, why we're 100 years behind, it's greed. 100% greed. And we all could be in Elysium or Paradise or Nirvana, the Golden Age, but because of our greed and our uh, 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 just a a said few who just really, really don't want to share that technology and have bought the patents and hidden it away in some, you know, Vatican (laughs) catacomb. I have a feeling we could be out seeing the universe, but instead, you know, they're going to go, hey, here's the James Webb telescope. That's neat. But I bet you there's a technology, the patent. We do not want them to have anti-gravity craft, right? No way. And let's dive back into the story, because at this part of the story is where we start to see these men with wealth and power kind of step into the picture. This attracted the attention of J.P. Morgan, who offered to finance Tesla's ambitious wireless power project. The financier gave Tesla more than $150,000. Now, today, that would be $4 million. With Morgan's investment, Tesla immediately set to work buying a 200-acre plot of land on one end of Long Island. In 1901, Tesla hired the prestigious architect Stanford White. Together, they designed and began construction on the 187-foot-high wooden tower with a giant ball on the top, 68 feet in diameter, made of steel, which was nothing but a massive magnifying transmitter, also known as a high-power harmonic oscillator. The tower was anchored more than 300 feet into the ground. In the ground below, there were said to have been tunnels and an iron root system that went deep into the earth. The energy was created by traditional means of generation, but Tesla's tower was intended to make it possible for anyone to transmit the power for free by creating a channel between the earth and the ionosphere above. It's worth mentioning that J.P. Morgan at the time believed that Tesla was working on a wireless telecommunication tower, not free energy. There's the swindle. He played with the wrong guy. Yeah, I think that Tesla was trying to get this thing accomplished before J.P. really figured out what was going on. Yeah, and that's not good. He should have had both projects. (laughs) He He should have. He should have had the one done and then been still working on the... So this is kind of the sell, like you had said, that he gave to J.P. Morgan, that this communication thing. Now, I think part of this was true. I think that maybe Tesla's vision changed slightly. This is what Tesla says. As soon as completed, it would be possible for a businessman in New York to dictate instructions and have them instantly appear in type at the office in London or elsewhere. He will be able to call up from his desk and talk to any telephone subscriber on the globe. An inexpensive instrument, not bigger than a watch, will enable its bearer to hear anything on sea or land, music or song, the speech of a political leader, the address of an eminent man of science, or a sermon of an eloquent clergyman, delivered in some other place, however distant. In the same manner, any picture, character, drawing, or print can be transferred from one to another place. Millions of such instruments can be operated from one plant of this kind. Dude, this is our reality. Tesla just spoke our reality. Now, you could say that other people... Inspired by Tesla. Inspired by Tesla. Very possible. But here's my point. My point being, what a visionary. (laughs) He was Steve Jobs. Dude, you can't communicate across seas. There's no telephone wire. There's no anything. So that doesn't even exist. This dude's talking about freaking pictures and videos and yeah, movies. cell phones. He should have lived today. He would have been fine. <laughs> dude, you know, it's incredible. For Tesla, this tower was the beginning. He had envisioned a network of towers across the world that would allow him to send electricity through the atmosphere, which anyone with the correct equipment could tap into. But Tesla, unfortunately, underestimated the cost and soon ran out of money. (laughs) Shouldn't have ripped up that contract. Yeah. An appeal to Morgan went unanswered as Morgan did not want to put 
any more money into this fantastic enterprise, as he called it. Perhaps J.P. Morgan was threatened by the prospect of free energy. After all, he was a businessman whose work centered around profiting from others. So Morgan quickly withdrew from financing the completion of the tower. Oh, crap. That was a waste of money. Dang it. In the meantime, investors were rushing to throw their money behind Marconi, who had successfully sent a signal from England to Newfoundland by transmitting the letter S in Morse code across the ocean. It was an era of financial uncertainty, and investors preferred to put their money in the proven Marconi system rather than Tesla's utopian dream. Tesla grumbled that the Italian was using 17 of his patents, but litigation eventually favored Marconi, and the commercial damage was done. Eventually, the U.S. Supreme Court says, yes, Tesla, you did have part in this invention. He did use your patents, but that wasn't made until after Tesla was gone. Thus, the Italian inventor was credited as the inventor of radio and became a very wealthy man. Tesla, though, did not give up. He put his own money and completed Wardenclyffe Tower and carried on investing and experimenting until 1905, waiting on his beloved tower to be up and running. Unfortunately, Tesla never managed to make it work. His debts reached $20,000, $478,000 in today's money. And finally, he abandoned his dream as the press started labeling it as the hoax of the century. Pause, pause. And you know that there are smear campaigns. There were smear campaigns all the time. And to smear free energy, you better believe they were smearing that. Mm Mm-hmm. What were they going to tell the coal guys and all the different... So you're telling me you want to put 70,000 people out of work? Yeah. Smear, 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 no, smear I, campaign. I, I, I'm, what I'm saying is the world could have free energy. That's what I'm saying. Well, all I'm hearing is that you want to put <laughs> 70,000 people out that's of work. That's it, Todd. Yeah. But that's how it's sold, man. And that's how it's spun. And that's still how it's spun it's today, so guys. It's so spun today. It, there's nothing that's really changed. It's so frustrating, dude. And we see it. It's even worse now. I mean, now now with the internet, now with social media, everyone yeah. with an idiotic idea can put something out there and it's like believable. Now with anybody with a podcast. Now any asshole with a podcast <laughs> can tell you, don't take your medication. Don't do all this stuff. Just drink water and do yoga. Yeah. Uh, what do we really know? I don't know anything. I, I just say, I'm here not a talk. doctor, guys. I, I'm, not, I'm a doctor. not even sure that my doctor's a doctor, you know, but <laughs> just, just listen to what we're saying. Yeah. I mean, clearly we're yeah. much more intelligent than you because yeah, we figured right. out how to work a microphone and a computer. Thanks, Tesla, <laughs> for the microphone. Yeah, thanks, Tesla. I wish this was all running on free power. Yeah. Could have been nice without that $400 electric bill. So back to it. Yeah. They basically said, whatever. It's a hoax. Of course they did. Eventually, he lost ownership of the tower, and the new owner had the tower demolished and converted to scrap metal to recover some of the cost. Tesla's words, my project was retarded by laws of nature. The world was not prepared for it. It was too far ahead of time. But the same laws would prevail in the end and make it a triumphal success. He was right, though. I mean, Mm -hmm. we're there. We're getting closer. We're catching up. I don't know that I've ever had that level of confidence like he just had. He's basically saying, okay, listen, that was a total failure. But in the end, I'll prove to have been right. He really, truly was born way too early. He showed up in the body that he showed up into, but a a hundred years too early. It just feels like the wrong place at the wrong time. Or maybe he was the right place at the right time. And now we're all benefiting from it. Again, I think he was, Tim. I think he was right place, right time, well, but sure, too early sure. for the world. Because I think, honestly, like we said earlier on in this episode, I think if Tesla was today, I think he's medicated as a child. Yeah. And yeah. those visions are gone. Yeah. And he's just another kid. Another kid struggling. Trying to get a job. Trying to become a YouTube star. After things kind of fell apart and he lost the tower... You know, his life kind of started to take a downward spiral. His life took a Howard Hughes billionaire sort of approach. It certainly did. And you know what? It really didn't help that he started claiming that he was receiving messages from outside of the world. 
1899, Tesla himself thought he was contacted by beings from another planet. He heard some rhythmic sounds on a radio receiver and was convinced they were extraterrestrial in nature. At this point, this is where I'd be like, okay, hey, maybe take some Abilify. So the next year, the Red Cross asked Tesla to predict man's greatest possible achievements in the next century. He replied by admitting he may have already achieved it by receiving a message from another world. Tesla ends up writing a letter to the Red Cross in New York, and here's what his letter says verbatim. The retrospect is glorious. The prospect is inspiring. Much might be said of both, but one idea dominates my mind. This, my best, my dearest, is for your noble cause. I observed electrical actions which have appeared inexplicable. Faint and uncertain though they were, they were given me a deep conviction and foreknowledge. That ere long all human beings on this globe, as one, will turn their eyes to the firmament above, with feelings of love and reverence, thrilled by the glad news. Brethren, we have a message from another world, unknown and remote. It reads, one, two, three. Christmas, 1900. Nikola Tesla. By 1912, Tesla began to withdraw from the world. He became obsessed with cleanliness and fixated on the number three. He began shaking hands with people and washing his hands, all done in sets of three. He had to have 18 napkins on his dinner table during meals and would count his steps whenever he walked. He claimed to have had abnormal sensitivity to sound as well as an acute sense of sight. And he later wrote that he had a violent aversion against the earrings of a woman. Uh, earring. Yeah, I read about that. Yeah. Something to do with earrings or toenails or something. I couldn't remember. Right. What it was. And then he says the sight of a pearl would almost give him a fit. Near the end of his life, Tesla became fixated on pigeons, especially a specific white female pigeon, which he claimed to have loved almost as one would love a human. Tesla out at the park. Here we go. Come here, little pigeons. Come here. Let me feed you. Oh, look at this beautiful white pigeon. <laughs> oh. brr, brr. Beautiful. Come here. Oh, you are like the lilies of the valley. Your, sh your teeth are like the freshly shorn sheep of, of wonder. You know what I mean? He's like Song of Solomon's, this uh, little, little pigeon. He loves that. Somebody killed that pigeon. And he lost his, his soulmate. He did. He really did. He had a soulmate as a pigeon. He, well, dude, uh, why don't you just jump ahead in the story? Don't. I <laughs> want to. You know what? Let's just shut it down. You We're know wasting what? too I much go, energy I go anyways. I've got to, I've got to empty my bladder. All right, go. I'm, I'm going to finish this and you go empty your bladder. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm still here. All right, Josh. Let's dive back into this while your brethren goes and urinates. <laughs> Near the end of this life, Tesla became fixated on pigeons, especially a specific white female pigeon, which he claimed to have loved almost as one would love a human. One night, Tesla claimed the white pigeon visited him through an open window in his hotel room, and he believed that the bird had come to tell him she was dying. He saw two powerful beams of light in the bird's eyes. He later said, yes, it was real light a powerful, dazzling, blinding light, a light more intense than I had ever produced in my most powerful lamps in my laboratory. The pigeon died in his arms. He claimed that in that moment, he knew that he had finished his life's work. Oh, by the way, real quick. Hold on. Pigeon love, it's driving me mad. It's making me crazy. Did you think about that while you're in the bathroom? Pigeon love, it's driving me mad. It's making me crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, Todd. <laughs> no, I'm endangering good. the mission. I shouldn't have come. You you have screwed it all up, man. Mm -hmm. I know. But no, that's what we're talking about. So he has these crazy visions of light coming in, right? From this bird's eyes, <laughs> a light that he's never seen before. This has been happening since he's, he was a child. Yeah, he's always he's seen yeah. and just kind of taken these things. He's going there. 
So it's hard to say that in his old age, he started getting crazy and see now because he's yeah. always had it. Then this begs the question, should we have given him some medication? Because obviously the pendulum swung too far. I don't know that it did. You know, and I don't know that it just swung too far. I think that there were series of events in his life that pushed him closer and closer to the edge. Him not being able to finish his tower, obviously, was probably a major catalyst in his demise. He had probably a perfectionist mindset and just the disappointment and letdown of something like that, that he knew he could do, but wouldn't have enough money to make it happen. And oh, yeah, for it just sure. kind of turned him, it just turned him weird. Well, here's the part that starts getting really strange. So Tesla would go on to make news from time to time while living on the 33rd floor of the New Yorker Hotel. In 1931, he made the cover of Time magazine which featured his inventions on his 75th birthday. And in 1934, the New York Times reported that Tesla was working on a death beam capable of knocking 10,000 enemy airplanes out of the sky. He hoped to fund the prototypical defensive weapon in the interest of world peace. But his appeals to J.P. Morgan Jr. and British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain went nowhere. Now, Tesla did, however, receive a $25,000 check from the Soviet Union, but the project languished. He died in 1943 at the age of 86, in debt, although Westinghouse had been paying his hotel room and board for years. <laughs> Real quick on that. That's Aww. a great... Here, here's Westinghouse. Forget the royalties, Man, I feel but... so bad about making you tear up those royalty checks. Here's, here, here, let me do it your hotel at least. You know what? How, how much is that you shitty know. hotel room? <laughs> it's it's twelve dollars a night. Now, Tesla, okay, let listen. me help you with that. Twelve dollars. Listen, a night. I could pay twelve dollars a night for one hundred years, <laughs> and it still wouldn't even become close to what you gave up. You son of you a bitch! Son of, Thank man, you so much. You are dumb. You so dumb. Man, Tesla. you a dumb business boy, but I like you. After Tesla's death, representatives of the U.S. government's Office of Alien Property seized many documents relating to the prolific inventor's work. What happened to Tesla's files from there, as well as what exactly was in those files, remains shrouded in mystery. After years of fielding questions about possible cover-ups, the FBI finally declassified some 250 pages of Tesla's related documents under the Freedom of Information Act in 2016. The Bureau followed up with two additional releases, the latest in March of 2018. But even with the publication of these documents, many questions still remain unanswered, and some of Tesla's files are still missing. Three weeks after his death, an electrical engineer from MIT was tasked with evaluating his papers to determine whether they contained any idea of significant value. According to the declassified files, Dr. John G. Trump, uncle of the 45th president Donald Trump, reported that his analysis showed Tesla's efforts to be primarily of a speculative, philosophical, and promotional character, and said the papers did not include new sound, workable principles, or methods of realizing such results. Yeah, no, no, no none of these findings are good. Nah, he was crazy. This is all garbage. This is, this is all crap. garbage. Yeah. This is crap. Oh, oh my gosh. No yeah. I don't know. This is a madman, basically. Mm, yeah. Too bad. Mm. Oh, but I got a great idea. Former President Donald Trump himself cited his uncle's credentials often during his presidential campaign. My uncle used to tell me about nuclear before nuclear was nuclear, he once told an interviewer. When Tesla died, his estate was to go to his nephew, Saba Kazanovic who at the time was the Yugoslav ambassador to the U.S. Thanks to his familiar connection with Serbia's most celebrated inventor, Tesla, according to the recently declassified documents, some in the FBI feared Kazanovic was trying to wrestle control of Tesla's technology in order to make such information available to the enemy, and the U.S. government even considered arresting him to prevent this. In 1952, after a U.S. court declared Kazanovic the rightful heir to his uncle's estate, Tesla's files and other materials were sent to Belgrade, Serbia, where they now reside in the Nikola Tesla Museum. 
But while the FBI originally recorded some 80 trunks among Tesla's effects, only 60 arrived in Belgrade. Maybe they packed the 80 into 60, but there is the possibility that the government did keep the missing trunks, stated Kazanovic. Let me give you my conclusion on Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla has always intrigued me, even as a young child. He was an absolute brilliant man that either drove himself mad towards the end of his life or gave him even more clarity that most of us will never fully comprehend. Those in power at the end of Tesla's life and today have been and always will be interested in money and even more power and control. I personally hold them responsible for the horrific state this world is currently in. Greedy businessmen and self-serving governmental officials are 100% to blame. Nikola Tesla, despite all odds against him, gave his best effort to change this planet for the betterment of mankind. Although, in the end, he lost the fight, he has inspired millions worldwide to continue what he envisioned. Are people still being oppressed by those in power? Absolutely. Are we beginning to wake up? I truly believe so. Do we still have a long way to go? Most certainly. Even though Tesla did not achieve his goals of free energy for every person on this planet, we do know that it is possible thanks to his pursuit. That alone should inspire us all to break free from what we have been indoctrinated to believe as the right and wrong way of doing things. As I tell my children, follow your instincts and question everything. That's it, bitches. Josh, good to have you back on the on the show. Josh, it was so it was so nice to have oh, you. Oh, it was back, great Josh. being back. And just to see your 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 face down here and be able to circle my mouse around it a few times. Fans and friends, if you guys go to our Instagram page or even if you go to our website, createdbyhuman.com, there's a picture of Josh on mm-hmm. there. And I tell you what, He's this guy man. has probably yeah. one of the best smiles He's a good guy. I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you, Todd, for uh, teaching us more on Nikola Tesla. Nikola? Nikola? Nikola! 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 Guys, thanks for hanging with me today. Thanks for listening to the story. Talk to you next week. Tim, Josh, I love you assholes love so you. much. I son of a biscuit. I love your face. No, I don't love your assholes. I love you <laughs> assholes. Damn it. All right, guys. Love you. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to the Created by Human podcast. Leave us a review. Follow us on our socials at Created by Human. Head over to createdbyhuman.com for additional information. Sign up on our mailing list. And check out our Created by Human swag. (laughs) Does it just sound like gibberish? We'll be back next week with an all-new story that is sure to make you question, is it true or was it 